Hey, Alex again. So I was making a completely different video and I figured while I had all my stuff out, I would just kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, and do some quickie on exper experiments on uh, annealing PLA. Now the traditional way that I would do it was uh, I found that 80 degrees for 30 minutes in a convection toaster oven wrapped in foil was pretty good. I don't know if it made it reach maximum crystallinity or anything like that, but it was tough enough that um, it deflected heat sufficiently relative to untreated PLA, and it increased the Young's modulus of the material as well, so that made me happy. But it took so long it was annoying, and I had a problem where um, if something couldn't be, if, if something wasn't flat, it would deform. I thought, well, why don't I just toss it in boiling water? Now that's gonna be 100 degrees as opposed to 80. Now I don't even know if the 30 minutes was necessary, because this is plastic and there's no way that it would crystallize that slowly. So what I had been doing was I would just take the flat PLA parts, um, put them between a couple pieces of metal and dump them in boiling water and then just let it cool down. Now, I wanna see if I could speed it up even more because faster's better. Because I was happy with the boiling method because I could use you know irregularly shaped parts and things like that and that it was a lot quicker, but I didn't know if the cool down period was necessary or not. So I printed out four test samples. I kept one as a control and then I did those three methods on the other ones and compared them against each other. Check it out. So it all started right here with a pot of boiling water. Actually, I'm lying. It actually all started right here with a convection toaster oven. See, this is how I used to anneal all of my PLA parts, where I would just sandwich them in between a couple pieces of aluminum, weigh them down with some sockets, cook for about 30 minutes at 80 degrees, and then pop them out and use them. But a little while ago, I discovered that I could get the same effect if I just sandwiched the flat parts in between a piece of brass like this, and then just tossed them into some boiling water and let it cool down naturally. But life is short and I'm impatient, so I figured, hey, why don't I split this into two parts and compare them against my, you know, standard toaster oven fare, and then see which works out best. I split them up, and one, I put a convenient little aluminum handle like this, let it boil for about two to five minutes, and then just poured it out and I plunked it into cold water, essentially quenching it like you would tempering steel. Since so I printed all three parts together from the same filament, it would be an apples to apples comparison. So as I unwrap this in comical fast forward Benny Hill motion with one hand, since I'm holding the camera with the other, you can see that the boiling water and the clamp, it makes them pretty flat. So that's nice. After that, I put both of the boiled sticks in some desiccant to dry them out while I set up for the test. It was at that point that I realized I could have tested them inside a Ziploc bag in the boiling water so I wouldn't have to dry them out, but I'll do that another time. If you've ever cooked PLA, you know how much it shrinks. And it did shrink a little bit. Now, you can see the four samples that I have here. The control is on the bottom, and there's definitely a dimensional change there you can see in the X direction. But you can already see one of the benefits of boiling instead of baking, because the second one in is the baked one, and it curled up like a naughty hot dog. I'll go ahead and fast forward through me making a bunch of dimensional measurements on these, because nobody got time for that. And what we ended up with was that the baked was uneven in the X and the Y, and it shrank the most, followed by the boiled, and then followed by the boiled and quench, which moved the least. So score two for boiled and quenched is the quickest, and it has the least shrinkage. But that doesn't do us a lot of good if the mechanical properties aren't intact. So I went ahead and I stuck these in a heat sink I got from some thing somewhere and then loaded them out evenly. I just use these little 10 millimeter ball bearings because I wanted to drag race these against each other in a heat deflection test. I put a little bit of a metal bar underneath just to give it a little bit more angle when I hit it with this sucker, which kicks off a lot of heat. Special note here, do not use a heat gun on a vinyl veneered bench top or you will have a bad afternoon. Thank you. Ho ho ho, I thought, isn't this going swimmingly? Well, that is until I ran out of storage space on my camera. And it happened halfway through the freaking test while I was running a heat gun, so there wasn't too much I could do about it. But I did finish the test. I just missed the last 30 seconds or so. And this is what happened. The controls on the left, the toasters next in, then the boiled and the boiled and quenched. It's pretty obvious that just the raw PLA failed pretty quickly. Now the other three, they just sort of bobbed up and down for a while as they slightly heated and slightly cooled. So I'm going to play this in fast forward when I cranked up the temperature and tried to see which one of those would fail the first. Well, it ended up being the toaster, and that's why I ran out of storage space. But you can see what the trend is. 
The toasted went next, followed by the boiled, and then the boiled and quenched held out for the last. Not too much different than a boiled, but it was a couple seconds afterwards, so I guess that's score another point for the boiled and quenched. And that brings us to our second epic fail. See, I use this meat thermometer that I usually use to get the temperature of wax when I'm potting guitar pickups, but it only goes up to 200 degrees. I'm not exactly sure what temperature this got up to. It looks like right there it's about 240 or so. But I consoled myself by melting my melted PLA back the other way. Obviously it's the raw PLA on the left and the annealed on the right. And the results are as expected. Now on to the stiffness test. I whipped out my Escaly Scaly and I put each of the four blocks, rods, whatever, on here in succession, and I saw how much weight it took to make them deflect 10 millimeters in the middle. The normal PLA took about 2,900 grams, and all the annealed were right around 4,4100-ish. Now the final battery of tests was supposed to be for ultimate tensile strain, but my control snapped before I could get a reading on it, so I kind of tossed that out the window. It did give me a chance to look at the edges and see what kind of breakage we have. The standard PLA snapped pretty brittily right across, whereas the annealed stuff, it gave a little bit in parts and it snapped in others. So that means that even though I didn't get numbers on it, which is unfortunate, it seems that it's a little bit more pliable, at least in parts, than the standard PLA and under the conditions that I tested. As always with these tests, your mileage may vary, but it seemed to be at least pretty decent from this small sample size results uh, showing that the, the boiled and quenched was just as good if not better than the, the standard toaster oven version. And if something is even around as good as another method and it takes two to five minutes instead of 30 minutes plus, I'm, that's the method I'm going to use. Plus there's the added benefit as I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you can take a uh, you know, three-dimensional, irregularly shaped object, not just something flat, and throw it in water, and it's not going to deform nearly as much because it's, you know, quasi-buoyant. It has a density of, I think PLA has a density of like 1.24 or something like that as opposed to one in water. So gravity's not gonna squash it as much. I did the test with a uh, racing vase that I had printed for some er earlier video that I did. I tried that in a toaster oven, it just melted into a ball of nonsense. And then I tried it in a boiling water, and it, as soon as it came out, just fine. It was normal. It was a little bit shrunken, but it wasn't misshapen, and that's the important part. Obviously, I didn't pull it out of the water and quench it because I would have mashed it up getting it out of there. I just let the water cool down itself, and then as soon as the water was room temperature, I yanked it out and it was fine. Like I said, I should have thought to wrap the parts up in plastic or something like that so they wouldn't be soaked with the water. I don't know if there's any negative effects long term with that, but I just threw them in some desiccant, and by desiccant, I mean cat litter with silica crystals in it and they seem to have dried out just fine so try it out for yourself worst case scenario is it took you five minutes in a pot of boiling water hope that helped out we'll see you next time